Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. I have a super quick project for you today. It's really, really simple sewing, no zips. We do have a few press studs to put in. Uh, this project wasn't my idea. I'm in hundreds of Facebook groups and I'm a Facebook junkie, I'll admit it. But anyway, I was on a Facebook group the other day and I saw this lady had made a pouch to put chopsticks in and I absolutely loved the idea. She thought of the idea herself and had been wanting to make it for quite a while and I loved the idea so I contacted her and asked her about it whether or not she already had a pattern because I didn't want to tread on anybody's toes. I've done that before and I got into trouble. So she's more than happy for me to do a video for her and her name's Tori so thank you so much Tori for allowing me to do this tutorial for this. I'm going to call it a cutlery pouch because although it was made as a sushi pouch when I saw it I thought it would be ideal as a cutlery pouch when you go camping. All credit goes to Tori, I hope I've pronounced your name correctly, Tori from New Jersey in the USA. She wanted to make something for her father who is a sushi lover and he likes to carry his own chopsticks around when he goes to sushi restaurants. So he has his own favourite chopsticks and she's made this pouch for him. For me today I'm going to make this as a chopstick pouch but also a cutlery pouch. Thanks again Tori for the idea. Come along with me and I will show everybody else how to make this sushi lovers chopstick pouch or a cutlery pouch. All right I'm going to give you two options for fabric cutting here. If you want to make these bags with just one piece of fabric so they're going to be self-lined then you need one piece of fabric that is 11 inches by 15 and a half inches so you'd, you'll only need the one piece of fabric for this for that 11 by 15 and a half inch piece of fabric you'll need a piece of batting as well or wadding or some kind of stabilizer for that you will need 11 inches by seven and three quarter inches so you actually want your batting to be half the length of the piece of fabric now I'm going to provide inches and centimeters for you up on the screen so you should see that just about now and then if you're going to make this with two different fabrics so say you want to have this as your main fabric and then this piece of fabric as your lining you want to have 11 inches across by 8 inches and you only need one of each and then you'll want one piece of stabilizer at the same size okay let's get started if you're using the 15 and a half inch piece of fabric by 11 fold it in half Get your batting, place that on one side and press that onto your main piece of fabric. So you'll have your batting or stabilizer on one side and the other half of fabric won't have anything. Or I have no noisy birds out in the garden again today. There's nothing I can do about those guys. This one here is my lining and my main fabric. I'm fu I've fused my batting onto the main part of the fabric. So go ahead and fuse your batting onto your fabric, whether you're using two separate pieces or whether you're using the one one piece of fabric. Once you've fused your batting on, let's take the bigger one to begin with. Fold the fabric in half. Where you have your fold at this end here, grab your sewing gauge and we're going to measure one inch from the side and one inch from the folded edge. And we only need to mark these edges here. Do the same for the other side. Once you've made your one inch marks across there, just take any ruler and we're going to draw a diagonal line across here, just like that. This isn't a ruler, it's actually a coaster that was a gift in a show bag that I got at a craft show many years ago so it's not something I, at least I don't think it's something that's widely available it is just a coaster made out of a cutting mat but I'll use anything to give me a straight line you can go and trim this off now if you like I like to just trim after I finished sewing so I'm going to treat this as the edge of my fabric and that as well so I've got the edge of the fabric this line will be the edge of my fabric and I'll have my quarter inch seam going across. I'll be stitching all the way down across there. I'll leave an opening in the middle. This is not to scale all right so I've just drawn the line there so that you can see where you need to sew. So we're going to leave an opening in the middle of about two or three inches just enough so that you can turn it through. Back stitch at each end, stitch across to the corner, come within a quarter of an inch, stitch all the way up to within quarter of an inch of this line and then stitch all the way to the end on both sides. That's for the one that's got the fold 
fold in it. If we take the other one that has got the lining piece and the main piece of fabric, we're going to lie these right sides together. Place your lining over the top of your main, right side facing. We'll do the same thing. Make a mark at one inch from the top and then you can go and draw the diagonal line again. Now this time around we have two pieces of fabric. We're going to start at the bottom here, leave an opening, back stitch here, come to the corner, come up here, stitch along here and all the way around. So we're just going to come all the way around just like that and stop down the bottom again. You don't have to do that in two separate goes, just start at one end, come around, keep stitching all the way down. Keep in mind that this is the edge of your fabric. You can go and cut this off straight away if it's going to confuse you. Okay so I've trimmed the corners off. We'll start down here, stitch all the way around, come back down and back stitch and leave that open. Let's take these to the machine. The first one I'm going to stitch together is the one with a whole piece of fabric so it's going to be self-lined. A quarter of an inch seam here, back stitch. I'm going to pretend that that drawn line is the edge of my fabric. Okay, there's my opening and there are my corners. I'm going to trim the corners off, then we'll turn this the right way around. This has been pressed nice and flat. The opening is just here and we're going to stitch that opening closed. So that top edge is closed. Now we're going to take our other piece of fabric, the one that's got the lining as well as the main fabric. We're going to stitch this one together. We'll start stitching from here, go all the way around up to the um, other side of the opening. I've mentioned to you before when I sew, if I'm coming up with two sharp corners, I like to back stitch a couple of stitches, then turn my work around and I'll do a couple more stitches and then I'll go back to the corner and then I'll continue on forward. Just gives me a little bit more support in the corner there. And there's my opening here for turning through. Trim the corners off this as well. Turn it the right way around and give it a really good press. Bring that folded edge back. You can finger press it or press it with your iron. And when you turn it around the right way later, it'll actually sit nice and flat at your opening. All right, we have both of these stitched together. We've got the self-lined pouch here and we've got the one that's got the main on the outside and the lining on the inside. From here we do exactly the same thing. Take the straight edge, fold that up, take your seam gauge, measure two and a half inches, pop a clip, repeat for the other side and along this edge here we're going to measure two inches down. I'm going to put my two inch line from the ruler along the straight edge up here. One would hope that the fabric line is perfectly straight but look I'm human. <laughs> so we've got two inches from there down. Just mark a line along here. This is just going to be a stitching line. All that happens when you do that stitching line is it creates a permanent crease and it just enables that to fold over nice and easily. Take this to the machine now. We're going to start at this end here, back stitch at the beginning, stitch up to the folded edge back stitch over that because you've got a stress point there, come all the way around, top stitching, come back down here, do the same thing at this fold here, we'll back stitch to reinforce that, come back down here and back stitch again, then we'll stitch along that drawn line. Now we're going to repeat the same procedure for this so it doesn't matter which side you want to use and I would look at that and choose whichever side is the ugliest and that is only reflected by my stitching so I can see the um, nesting of the th thread on this side here so that is going to be hidden when I bring that up. So I've got my nesting on the inside and nobody will ever know that that's there. Fold it up two and a half inches exactly the same as the other one and I'll make that same two inch mark from the top edge and we'll take that to the machine and stitch all the way around as well. After that we just have to put our press studs or snaps on. And I'll stitch down this line and that's the sewing part done. So by stitching that line there that actually helps that fold down nicely. And now we just need to put some snaps or press studs on. We're going to stitch this one exactly the same as we did with the blue one. Okay, 
Okay, the last thing we need to do now is put our snaps on or our press studs. If you don't have access to these little plastic snaps, then just get yourself some of these little metal press studs. You can get them in gold, silver, black and all sorts of different sizes and you can hand stitch these on. I actually used these when I made the Christmas bonbons, the ones that are reusable. I like to use these tiny little plastic snaps and I get them in all sorts of colours though most of the time lately I've been buying them in black. It's easier just to go with black than it is to try and get the right colour for everything. I store mine in these little pill boxes. I can just store all the different colours inside and they're not going to come out providing I close the lid properly. So they're a great little way for storing all the different colours. Anyway, let's get snapping. We're going to put three snaps on each one of these. So if you prefer, you can just put two, but you can see that they end up sticking up just a little bit on the side there. So I'm going to put three snaps, one on each end to keep the sides down and one in the centre so that it doesn't pop out. Fold that in half there and this is the centre of our pouch. This is the top flap. I'm coming up about three quarters of an inch which is about two centimetres and poke a hole in it with your awl. Place that over the top of your pouch and we want to transfer the marking from that awl through to the next layer of fabric. Poke the awl through again being careful not to poke these sides and there's the position marked for the centre. I'll pop that one in first, take your cap and put that in from underneath and one of these, the this is the innie, I'll just pop that on like that for the time being, grab another cap and we'll place that on the outside and we'll grab the outie, so we've got an innie and an outie and just squeeze those together. Grab your press, my hands are still a little bit weak from my carpal tunnel surgery so I don't have as much strength as I used to have, not yet anyway. We've got our snaps pressed together and that will just go and sit down nicely like that. But see how that sticks up on the side? This is why I think we need three rather than two. Measure down three quarters of an inch again at the other end and I will make that one and a half inches from this corner fold. Do the same over here one and a half inches or three and three quarter centimeters. This is really your personal choice. You, you put this where you want to put it, not where I want you to put it. Poke a hole where you've just made your mark, close the center snap, just hold this in place here. Where this hole is, go through with your awl and you can see underneath here I've made a little bit of a mark there and just poke a hole. Okay. If you're more comfortable pressing this down, putting your awl in place, you can take your marker and just put a little dot there and that's where you'll poke a hole, making sure you don't go through the other layers. So it doesn't matter which way you do this, uh, you just want to centre them nicely along this edge and the flap. You want to make sure you remember that you have your ins and outs on the correct side, otherwise you won't get your snaps closing. I've broken one of my snaps because I wasn't careful when I was putting it together. Fortunately I hadn't pressed too hard so it pulls apart quite easily. There we go. I'll go and repeat that for the next few bags and then I'll show you all of them completed. Just a quick little tip, if you're making a whole batch of these you don't have to go and make your markings on every single bag. Mark your positions out on one bag and this is uh, in relation to the flap. Lay this one over the top of the other and just centre it and then just poke a hole through the top layer and the bottom layer and then do the same down here then at least you've got some holes marked for the next bag and you can go and repeat that for the next one and the next one and so on. Just makes the job a little bit quicker so that you don't have to measure every single bag. Okay let me show you what I've got here. I've done a bunch of these in a couple of different fabrics and some without any stabilizer at all. This bag here, this one and that have all been done with quilting cotton and they've all got that lightweight pallet stabilizer inside it. So there we have a little pocket there and we've got a set of cutlery sitting inside our pouch. So that just stores in there really nicely and you can take that away if you're going camping, if you're in the scouts and you're going away for a jamboree, if you're going on a school camp, you can pop your cutlery in there nice and neatly. Likewise it's intended use for chopsticks. 
these hold your chopsticks perfectly and your little chopstick spoon thingamajig soup spoon really nicely as well it's nice oriental fabric too I've used quilting cotton for these ones I've used quilting cotton for the lining on this but I've used a heavier cotton on the outside but this still has that palin stabilizer inside it this one here is actually made or well, these two here are actually made out of rubber backed curtaining so I've used the 15 and a half inch version the self-lined version there's no stabilizer in this one whatsoever so it is a little bit on the floppier side but because I'm using the rubber backed curtain it gives it a little bit more stability uh, but anyway this is using one piece of fabric the 15 and a half inches and it's self-lined it's a rubber backed curtaining it's still stable enough to use as a cutlery pouch so you don't have to go and use a stabilizer in all of your products if I were to use upholstery fabric to make these I didn't today but if I were to I wouldn't go and use a stabilizer in those stabilizer is always going to come down to personal choice it depends on what you want out of your finished product so what did you think I've been busy today making up quite a few of these little pouches I think I've made two four six I've made seven of them so far I've decided that I'm actually going to try them in the shop so I'm going to I've sewn them to sell I was too slack to put my labels on though I figured they're just a little pouch I didn't want to put my labels on the outside because I don't know if I like them as much as I used to at least not on nicer fabric and I just to be honest couldn't be bothered putting labels on today so I've had a lot of fun making these up I'm not going to make that many I'm just going to try them in the shop and see how they go including cutting ironing and putting the snaps on they took me less than 15 minutes each to make so that means I can get about four at least four of these done an hour if I had a whole lot of fabric that I was cutting out and I was doing dozens of these all at once I would have a really good assembly line happening and I would be able to get that time down probably to about 10 to 12 minutes per bag so that will save on my time costs I'm going to put these in the shop again these ones have cost me nothing by way of fabric I'm going to do these for $15 each just to see what happens uh, if they don't sell I'll pop the price down I can't go up in price if they sell really well so I might as well try them at a little bit of a higher price I can afford the time to have them sitting in the shop it's summer here now so we might be more likely to sell a few of these in the shop with the warmer weather I'll keep you updated in one of my regular quarterly posts when I do my sales analysis so there they are they are the cutlery holder come sushi no cutlery holder come chopstick holder uh, and look you can actually I think you could make this a little bit shorter make it a little bit deeper it'll be perfect for a sunglasses case I might do that in the coming weeks anyway I'm going to love you and leave you I shall catch you next time bye for now